hello and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today let's paint some fall inspired leaves. The ones I have here are some maple type leaves, but this tutorial can be adapted to pretty much any leaf you want. This is a super simple tutorial. You don't need any watercolor skills or even any basic drawing skills. First thing I want you to do in this tutorial is go take a little walk around the block and collect a few leaves. These don't have to be the exact colors you want to use, just make sure they're relatively flat and in good condition. The reason for this is that we can actually use these to trace around them. You don't have to be super careful, but just use them as a general guideline for the general shape of the leaves. And this is really going to give you just a leg up so that you don't have to know how to draw to begin with. Plus, we're going to be working with some kind of wet on wet blending type techniques today. And that can be hard enough, so we don't need to worry about something else too. Feel free to dry your leaves if you want to, but this is a super helpful thing to get started right away. In your collection of leaves, you probably are at a different time than I am, and so maybe your leaves don't have the colors you want, and this is where our imaginations can go. We can just lean into the colors that we want to see in these leaves. We don't need to be super accurate in how they are currently portrayed, or even necessarily the colors they would turn. Just be inspired by the colors of fall. Once you have your leaves traced out or drawn on, you want to do this fairly lightly. You'll notice here I have mine drawn pretty darkly, and that's mainly so that you can see, so you'll definitely be able to see my outlines as I paint over these. But if you do yours super lightly, you won't be able to see them very well at the end, or you can use a watercolor pencil and it will all blend together at the end. Then grab your watercolors. Now these watercolors I have here don't have traditional names, so I'm gonna be giving you their approximate names for whatever set you might likely have. I'm using a yellow green and I'm mixing that with a little bit of a kind of an orange color, which is gonna give us this really vibrant brown type color that we see often in fall colored leaves. And I'm gonna place this around the edges in a few different places. We want some variations. Then to that same mixture, I'm going to add a little more of that yellow green, maybe even pop in some different colors, some other greens, like an, a sap green or an olive green that's going to give a little variation to show that maybe these are in the process of changing. And even throw in some more reds or vermilion type hues into the center to give it a little more vibrancy. You don't need to be super careful with this. Just kind of go with the flow. It's okay if you leave a few white spots, and in fact, sometimes it's a little bit better. The other thing I like to do is emphasize some of the outside parts with either some more browns or some yellows, because often when leaves are changing colors in the fall, the outside gets that kind of crispy type texture to it because it turns the quickest. Then you're gonna wanna let this layer dry completely. I recommend either using a hair dryer or moving on to another leaf like I did here. And for this exercise, I wanted my leaves to all be a little bit different. So this one, I leaned a little bit more into a mixture of that yellow green with a bit of kind of golden type color and a slight brown hue to it. That was the majority of this leaf before I placed in some of those more vibrant colors. Now, if you look at a maple leaf, some of these maple leaves actually have this really bright pink type color, so you can hint to some of that in there, and we can also use that a little bit later. Again, this doesn't need to be super careful. You can leave a bunch of white spaces, and as a matter of fact, I think that this is one of those things that really makes watercolor what it is when you leave those white spaces. Let's take a look at all three of my leaves. One of these leaves I painted super intentionally and tried to get super perfect and completely fill in all those gaps and get really vibrant colors. And it does look pretty, but it doesn't quite have some of that same magical feel that watercolor has. And this seems to be one of the biggest I don't know if I want to call it mistakes because everybody's practice and taste is going to be a little bit different, but oftentimes when people are practicing and they're not seeing kind of that magical quality of watercolor, I think it comes down to this. 
that you want to do such a good job that you completely cover anything when really all you need to do is loosen up, be a little less careful, and leave some white spaces so you get some more dimension and movement and some of those highlights in there. As you can see between here, there's kind of a big difference in how these ones look on the one that I completely covered versus the ones that I left some white space. If at the very least you can leave a little white space kind of somewhere around that center where that main vein or stem of that leaf is going to be, it's definitely going to help these look a little bit more realistic. Or if not realistic, at least playful. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is let these dry completely because we do want to add some of those vein type details onto these and we want to do that when everything is nice and dry so that they won't soak in. So I'm actually going to use a hair dryer and you can do this at any time you need to speed up some drying in your watercolor until they're ready to go. Then again, as I mentioned earlier, these maple leaves have this really unique kind of pink center stem to them that's just absolutely beautiful and so that's what I'm going to use for those vein details on the leaf and I'm just going to add in a few of those making sure I maintain some of that white space and just kind of hinting to them we don't need to fill in all the gaps your imagination will do a lot and there we go now you have painted some beautiful fall colored inspired leaves if you want to see more testing videos where I test out different variables for fluid painting, want to see any watercolor tutorials or some other art supply testing, subscribe to my channel. Or if you just want to see some of the art that I create, it's really varied. You can follow me either at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts on Instagram or Rebel Unicorn Crafts on TikTok where I make some, some funny videos as well as some tool talk videos and... I hope that you have a magically creative day.